question 10 then from the 2022 Advanced Higher Paper 2. Nine marks. It's the second order differential equation question. Solve this second order differential equation given those initial values. So you have this second order because you've got up to the second derivative differential equation. It's the easy type, but it's only type you do. Advanced Higher has just got constant coefficients. There are two steps to the solution. The first step is to solve the homogeneous equation. That's the equation when this part is equal to zero. So, the homogeneous equation. It's called the homogeneous equation because everything is the same. Everything is a term in Y or its derivatives. There are no terms solely in X. That would be the non-homogeneous equation, which is the general one you've got to solve. Now, the only sort of function that could solve this would be something like y whoops, equals e to some power of x. Because when you differentiate y, it keeps turning back into itself. And it would have to keep turning back into itself if it was all to cancel out to zero. And of course, hidden within that, you've got the sines and cosines. It would also work for sines and cosines. They keep turning back into themselves. And of course, that's hidden within that by that Euler equation, e to the i theta, is cos theta plus i sine theta. So if you feed that through and tidy it all up, you end up with what's called the auxiliary equation, which would be m squared, just using these coefficients, minus 4m plus 4 equals 0. So normally you just take that and just jump straight in with that part. Now doing that gets a mark. Then solving that's quite easy. That's just going to be m minus 2 squared equals 0, which means m equals 2, except there's only one answer. You've got a repeated root, and you need two answers if it's a second order one, because when you integrate that up, you'll go through the system twice, producing two constants. Well, one of them's certainly going to be y equals e to the 2x, but the other one can't be y equals e to the 2x. It has to be something different to that, because otherwise it would just add on to this one and just give you one solution. Now, there is a process you can go through that you don't, don't know about yet, which shows that the other solution would be of the form y equals x e to the 2x. So those would be the two solutions you would get that would form the complementary function. Either of those, if you feed it through this, gives an answer of zero. So any combination of them fed through will give zero. And that gives you a first part. That gives you your complementary function. Which you could call YC or YH because it uh, solves the homogeneous equation. I'll just go for YC. <coughs> so YC would be, I could have any of them, any number of them and any number of them. So AE to the 2X plus BX e to the 2x. Doing that gets a mark. Now you could rearrange that, you could tidy that up. It's just a, a subject. If it was a final answer, I'd probably tidy up because I've got that common factor there. You could rewrite that as a plus bx e to the 2x and work with that later on but it, you'll find it doesn't actually make much difference which of those you use in the later parts. Probably use that in the final answer just to make it look a bit neater. Clearing a space, putting this information I've got so far up here and reinstating the non-homogeneous part, the part that doesn't involve a Y. I've now got to solve this. I've got to find what's called the particular integral or more generally the particular solution. And the way that you do it well, there is a proper mathematical technique that you don't know of, but the way you do it is called the method of undetermined coefficients, which basically just means you have a guess. You have a guess as to what that might be, and you feed it through and you'll see if it works or not. Well, if y has to re result in sines and cosines, a reasonable guess for your particular integral would be this. I'll make it up of some number of sines. Now, I've used a and b already, so I'll say some number of sines and some number of cosines. Now, if I have to feed this through, I'll need the two derivatives. Well, that's all right, because I'll just shorten this to by that. No, no, 
Yes, I will. No, I won't. So divide by dx would be c cos x. Differentiating cos is negative. That would be minus d sin x. Differentiate it again. That will go to negative c back to sin x. And that will stay negative because sin just goes to cos x. Now doing this part gets a mark. Making this guess for your particular solution for your particular integral. Now you've got to substitute that into there. Now there's two ways of doing it. I quite often just do it by shorthand by noting that I need four of them, minus four of them, and one of them. Because in the end, once you substitute this in, there's only going to be two terms. Some term that says sine and some term that says cosine that you'll compare with the required result. Maybe this time I might have space if I write quite small just to fit it all in. So what that says is this. You've got, I'll just start over here and write really small. Minus c sine x minus d cos x minus 4 of c cos x minus d sine x Oops. plus 4 of c sine x plus d cos x should equal 9 sine x plus 13 cos x. Now, doing that gets a mark, substituting it back into the original equation. Now, there's only going to be two terms. There's going to be some number of sine x. There's going to be some number of cos x, because those are the only types of terms you've got there, that should form 9 altogether of sine x and 13 altogether of cos x. Now, you just carefully go through it all. What have you got altogether? Now, there'll be a small amount of arithmetic. I just want the final result in here, just C's and D's. So for sine x, you've got minus C, plus 4D, and plus 4C. So the minus C and the plus 4C means you've got 3C, and that was um, plus 4D. Now the cosines, what have you got with the cosines? You've got a minus D, that's a C, and a plus 4D, so that's a 3D. I'll just put that in the second place to keep it the same as this. And for the C, you've got a minus 4C. Now that means you can equate corresponding parts. So now I've got this. I've got 3C plus 4D. The number of signs should be 9. And negative 4C plus the 3D should be 13. You've got this pair of simultaneous equations. Arriving at that gets a mark. I'll just give them names, 1 and 2. So if you take 4 of them and 3 of them, 4 of 1 plus 3 of 2, that'll cancel out because you've got 12 minus 12. But here you're going to have 16 and 9 is 25d is equal to, now 4 of them and 3 of them, 36 and 39. 60, 75. Well, that was quite nice because that means that d is equal to 3. Now you can take that result and feed it back in to find c. Well, we'll use this one because I've got a 3c there. I've got a positive. So d equals to 3 in 1 makes 3c plus 4 of them, which is 12, should equal 9. So that's negative 3 divided by 3, negative 1. So c is negative 1. Getting those results gets a mark. Now you can feed it back into this, your particular solution, your particular integral. We'll give it a name this time. Call it yi because we're calling it particular integral. That means the particular integral should be c is negative 1, so that's negative sine x. d is 3, so it should be plus 3 cos x. Now you've got these two equations. You can combine them to get the general solution to the differential equation. You've got the little, if you like, hidden part, the complementary function, and you've got the particular solution that gives this part. So putting them together. Now, to clear some space again, there's all the information so far. To get the general solution to this differential equation, then you add up these two parts. The complementary function, which is hidden in there, if you like, and the particular solution, the particular integral, which actually solves this part of it. So the solution should be y equals that complementary function plus that particular integral. In other words, y should be 
sum lot of e to the 2x plus b times x e to the 2x minus sine x plus cos x plus 3 cos x. Still got two unknowns. You'll get the two unknowns from two equations then because you've got two values here. You've got an initial condition. When x is 0, y is 5. In other words, this should come to 5. And when x is 0, the derivative should be 0. In other words, the derivative of that should come to 0. Well, I'll use this one first of all. y of 0 is 0. No, it's not. It's 5. So 5 should be equal to a, e, and that'll just be 0, plus, now if x is 0, the whole thing's 0, minus the sine of 0, plus 3 times the cos of 0. Well, e to the 0 is 1. So that means you've got 5 is equal to just a, the sine of 0 is 0, the cos of 0 is 1, so that's plus 3. So from that you've got a must be, take that across, a must be 2. Doing that gets a mark. Now, to use the second initial condition, you need to differentiate this, right? So dy by dx, that'll be multiplied by that too. So 2a e to the 2x plus product, so bx first of all. That'll just be b, leave the e to the 2x alone, plus, now, leave the bx, and e to the 2x, of course, stays, but gets multiplied by 2. Sine goes to cos, and cos goes to negative sine. Doing that gets a mark. Now, what was dy by dx when x was 0? It was 0. So that comes to 0. So e to the 0 is 1, so that just comes to 2a. e to the 0 is 1, so that comes to b. x, it's in there, so that's just 0. Cos of 0 goes to 1, and sine goes to 0. Now you knew a was 2, so what you've got then is b must equal, take the 1 across, that's positive 1, 2 2's are 4, take that across as minus 4, which means b equals negative 3. Now you've got the two parts that you can feed back into this to get the final solution. Now you can feed it back into the original to get the final general solution. So y is a, 2, 2e two e to the 2x, plus b, so that's minus 3x e to the 2x, and then those parts are unchanged, minus sine x plus 3 cos x. Now you get the final mark. Unless, of course, you wanted to tidy that up. Now you could use that other form because you've got e to the 2x is common to these terms. So you've got 2 minus 3x lots of e to the 2x minus the sine x, plus three lots of the cos x. But you didn't need to tidy up. That would do for the final mark in this particular case.